All right, so we're, we're live into the Chime community. We've got some people watching on the webinar side of this. And today, it's just going to be the three of us, but we're going to be talking really to, to Brett here because Brett's been using Facebook ads, Facebook lead ads, dynamic ads with Facebook, and obviously that includes Instagram too. But he's been using that for years now to grow his business. And we wanted to dive deeper into this because the number one complaint I hear overall is that you can get a ton of Facebook leads, but you can't get a lot of transactions from them. So we want to first understand his business model when it comes to that, Facebook, and then how he nurtures them along the way. So Brett, welcome to your own show. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is really weird. I'm used to be like, hey, welcome. Yeah, no, this is it's, weird. Thanks um, for being on, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Uh, on, on this side of things, it's kind of weird. But hey, we'll, we'll pull through it. I uh, had a little fun with the background today. So um, send food. And uh, my snack level is critical. So um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, yeah, Facebook ads. I mean, I think one of the things that like, if we look way, way back to like when I started in real estate, I started with Facebook and a lot evolved since then. A lot has evolved with Facebook since then. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we, if we take a look, you know, take a look way, way back then, um, I think I did a, my very first webinar um, that kind of like, got me on the map as far as like people went, wow, who's this guy? Um, where I made, I did one Facebook ad and I, I think I generated like 68, like really quality leads off of one Facebook ad. And then I ended up closing out of those, you know, 68, I closed like 32 deals out of those. <laughs> so Damn. yeah, I got, I got put on the map with that one a little bit. And I think that the thing that we all, we all look at when we, when we talk Facebook ads is everybody goes, well, you can get a ton of quantity, but you can't get any quality. And the truth is you have to understand the buying process to really understand where people fall in the funnel of leads. So if you have your funnel, Facebook leads are like pretty much at the top wide mouth of the funnel. And then you get really refined as you get down. And I've posted somewhere how my funnel works. And you know, you have what I call the dreamer stage which is all the way up there and you work your all the way down to, you know, this is happening. And, and a lot of people that, that generate leads on Facebook don't realize that those Facebook ads are up here in the dreamer phase. And so you have to nurture them all the way down the funnel, which is awesome because then you have a really great shot at getting that person to be a really loyal client. But uh, at the same time, it does take a lot of work. Now, Back in the day, that was harder, right? So you you get a ton of ad, a ton of leads that come through. That was harder because you didn't have a lot of automated follow up. Now insert Chime with AI, and we can get a ton of really great follow up automatically. So Chime can do the heavy lifting for you, and we're going to talk about a little bit of that today. But I love Facebook ads. I think Facebook ads still are just as relevant as they were. You know, we had a little bit of a, a little hiccup when uh when facebook changed their algorithm but i'm going to show you guys how to work around that today too so all right dude so have you tried the feature on chime the whole uh listing ads that promote my listings promote a list yes mm -hmm. how, i sure how have you found that that in comparison to the other type of marketing that you can get through chime for facebook ads sure so so the listing ads are really actually they're very easy to use and that's that's the best part of it is it's if you want to be able to, let me, let me back this up because I'm going to go a different direction with this. I was going down this like whole weird rabbit hole. We're going to totally like hard right and go down a totally different path. All right. All right. Let's go. talk for a second about when you list a property, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get a buyer for that property? You bring the buyer or are you trying to use that to get more listings? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Anytime that I would get a listing, I didn't look at how many buyers can I bring to this property. What's the chances of actually double signing the property? In fact, some states, some countries, you can't even do that. So when you get a listing, what should be your goal? Your goal should be using that listing to leverage it to get another listing. That should be your goal. So when you're running Facebook ads, in my opinion, you should be running those Facebook ads to show your seller how hard you're working to get their property sold. 
if that makes like any sense 100%, at all. hundred percent, dude, hundred percent. So that's how I use Facebook ads. I use Facebook ads to generate more listings for myself. So whenever I'm doing like, if I use, let's use uh, Chime's Facebook listing tool, that's showing off the marketing that I'd be doing for that house. So I'm gonna show that off to a bunch of other people. I like eyes on property. And the more people that can see that property, the more people can see how hard I'm working. So let's say you have a listing and now you use that listing to get another listing. Now you use that listing to get another listing and you're just gonna sit there and you keep growing your little chain of listings. But you can use that lead tool that just literally to pop up photos of the property, information about the property and just get eyes on the property, driving them back to your website where then you can hit them every single time you list another property, if that makes any sense at all. Of course, man, that's awesome. Now, do, yeah. do you ever take uh, the route where you you get a listing and then you do you do both options, which is, okay, I'm gonna see if I can get more exposure for this property and I'm gonna do a separate ad to get leads, to get more listings or Absolutely. More. That's absolutely. Um, I like doing that. And then I, I force registration on it a little bit sooner than I would on like one of the, uh, the listing ads, for example. And that's one of those, you know, you run it to like a, if it's in a first time home buyer price point, and I'm actually going to share some of my favorite ads that I've ever created on Facebook with you guys. Um, so that way you can kind of see, but I have, you know, like a first time home buyer ad, I have a move up buyer ad, I have a relocating buyer ad. And so I look and I go, okay, this house falls in my first time home buyer price point. Cool. Well, I'm going to run an ad for first time home buyers. I'm going to lock that registration right behind it. I don't do Facebook lead ads or anything like that. It's all done on Chime's site. Um, I've found that if the, if the person has to jump through too many hoops, um, they, won't, they won't jump. They'll literally jump through the first hoop and be like, nah, I'm over it. If they land on the Chime site, I can then retarget them. I can do all kinds of cool stuff, but I have to get them on my site first. Got it. So anywho... Uh, yes, I will. And I will put them in a category of, of where they fit. Are they a move up buyer? Cool. I'll run a move up buyer ad for that house. Okay. I like that, dude. Make sense? So then help me understand here. I'm, I'm trying to open up a window here. Perfect. Yeah. Because I want to know what you would typically use this for in Chime. Let me open it up. So you see here where I'm creating a new listing. First, if you want absolutely a little paper airplane, and then you'd go over here, listing ads, uh, and then I would create one right here. Uh, right. What would you typically use this for? What What would I expect? This is going to be eyes on property, right? This is how you get eyes on property. So this is your new listing promotion. I always tell people to choose the auto promotion because it's going to put out the most number of ads for most eyes on property, right? We're yeah. in a super hot market. Most areas are in a super hot market. So when you actually have this go out and you have new um, price change, pending, sold, all that stuff, you're getting, like it's showing there, like 13,930 eyes on property. And some people say, but Brett, like what's the ROI on that? Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty decent. But 13,930 eyes on that property, that's, that's a lot of eyes. And, and when you look at it over the basic promotion, it's more than double on the basic promotion. Dude, it, so, makes, it makes a lot of sense here. Right. So Chime posts both of those on Instagram and on Facebook. So you're getting double the traffic. I like Instagram when I run ads. In fact, I think I like it more than Facebook, especially if the house is photo worthy. If you have like this really awesome house, photo worthy, you're gonna get what I call stop worthy technology or stop worthy ads. They're gonna be scrolling through, you know, looking at, I, I think of Instagram as like funny dog and cat pictures because that's pretty much what it is at this point. Uh, you know, watching like a, uh, a dog, you know, ski down a hill or something. But um, I, if you have a photo worthy house, you better be having those photos on Instagram. Otherwise you're wasting uh, just a ton of potential. Um, if I'm not doing lead form ads, what are you using as a campaign objective? Uh, traffic. I'm using traffic as a campaign form objective. So that was, John asked what that was. Um, and the reason is, so if you look way back, like way before 
Facebook started filtering, right? We used to be able to do all kinds of cool filters on there. And the filters were like, you know, you could, you could uh, refine by income, you could refine by whether or not they owned a home, you could refine by all that kind of stuff. Well, that all went away. And it was kind of hilarious because most agents lost their minds. They're like, well, how am I gonna get in front of people now? And the truth is, if you sit down, and I, I've, I've, I've harped on this for years, mm -hmm. figure out who your demographic is, figure out who your target audience is, figure that out before anything else. You can create ads in writing that actually target certain people, even if it's not targeted with demographics inside Facebook. So if you have something on there, like uh, I'll use the first time home buyer one that I, in fact, let me just share my screen. This is gonna be hard. I'm on a different computer today. So this is interesting for me. Uh, I think this works. We'll try that. Okay. So if you're using like a first time home buyer ad, and these are the actual ads that I'm gonna make sure you guys get. Um, but if like, we'll use, these are some of the old ones that I used to run a lot, but you can even use this as kind of something to guide you. If you're looking to buy a house, uh, are you looking to buy a house in Pasco? If your rent is somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month, you can own one of these homes. Most people can even get help with down payment. Now, why is this important? Well, because if you don't rent a house, you're probably not going to pay attention to this ad at all. Like you'll, you'll just browse right through it. Like, oh yeah, no, I don't rent. And you'll skip right through it, which is okay because you're not my demographic. If we go down a little bit further and you go, you know, um, I'll use an old one that I, I literally like created this for this. Um, search for homes near Cal State Long Beach instantly. Save searches, favorite at homes you love. Schedule showings all online. Now on something like this, it's gonna be a move up buyer. Now, why am I, why am I doing this? Well, because they probably already have a house. They're yeah. not a renter, they already have a house. Relocating buyer, are they moving to the area? If you're not relocating to the area, you're probably not gonna pay attention to it. And that's okay. But sure. what I tell people is figure out who you're targeting. Start there, then start working. What I like to do is I, I figure out what lead I want. Who is my ideal lead? And then I work backwards. So I'll start and go, okay, I want this person. And I go really like in detail. In fact, I name my leads, as weird as that sounds. So I, I name my little avatars. So let's just say that like Jim is the person that I'm trying to target. I just say Jim because, you know, he's on our call right now. But like, I'll, I'll say Jim is my target audience. And let's just say Jim is a, let's say Jim's an airline pilot. And, uh, you know, he, he's looking for, okay, so he's going to have a higher income. He's going to be looking for probably a home near the airport. He's going to be looking for these things. Okay, I can start backtracking that and I'm going to create the ad specifically for that. I, I hope that makes sense. Because yeah, start at the end product and who you want to target and then work your way forward. And that's how you target somebody without using filters. I love that, man. Um, let's see what yeah. else I've got on here. Do you have anything in regards to how you use dynamic ads? Oh man, here's the cool part about dynamic ads. You don't have to do a thing with dynamic ads. Chime just runs them for you. Um, and, and anybody who has even considered the thought of retargeting there's, there's retargeting and then there's remarketing. Um, if you've had, if you're like, oh, I really want to do retargeting, but A, you don't really have a, a decent budget to like really get into it. No. You can have Chime basically do it for you. It's, it's about as real time as you can get without just spending tons and tons and tons of money. Chime will do it. Randy, what do you charge for dynamic ads? Do you know? I thought uh, it was 150 bucks. Well, I'm sorry, you, you cut out. I think the minimum is 450 altogether okay. to get started. Okay. So here's the deal with that. And, and people go, well, what are, what are dare ads? What are, what are these things? Yeah. So let's just say, you, I mean, you have the Amazon effect. You go, you, you go on the website and then later on, you, you know, let's say you, you search for like a three bed, two bath house uh, in let's just say Richland, because I know Richland off the top of my head. Um, then all of a sudden you leave, you're browsing Facebook later and those houses that you were just searching for just start reappearing in front of you. And the cool part is as you change your search, as that lead changes their search around, the houses change with them. So they're getting relevant properties based on their lead search, which is 
unbelievably mind blowing to me um, that Chime figured out how to do that. Because from a coding perspective, that is really hard. <laughs> um, is it worth the 450 bucks? If you have 450 bucks a month to spend on something, um, that, that is what I would spend $450 a month on. In fact, if you're not using that yet, that is what you should be using. Uh, it's just, yeah, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I think one uh, thing that, that we have to also understand is for approximately for every $100 you spend, you target about a thousand people, right? So if that's you're somewhere in that neighborhood, yeah, it, it ranges around there, which is like pretty powerful, man. The yeah. ability to, to do this at an extremely low cost and nurture your database that you typically most people don't do much with. Right. That's pretty powerful. So how do you combine or do you uh, combine the automated retargeting with AI? Do you have that in place or no? Yeah, good question. Um, so I, I like looking at a, a multi-step follow-up system. I'm a huge fan of that. So you've got to hit people on different angles because different people respond differently. Okay, so you have, in my opinion, you can have a, a smart plan doing some follow-up for you. You can have the AI texting. You can have the dynamic ads being run on Facebook. And what this is all doing is it's all sending a very similar message to them. It's keeping you top of mind, which, you know, we look back, if we look way back into like the, not the beginning of real estate, I say the beginning of real estate because I was a kid uh, when, when all this was going on. Uh, but like in the, like the early 80s, when it was like, you know, you were doing pop buys, you were doing like literally anything you could do to stay in front of people. That's somewhere around here. I think I still have like a notepad from my dad when he was like, you know, way younger. And I was like a, a tiny little toddler. I have a notepad of his somewhere around here. Um, but you had like, those kind of things would come by, you know, you'd have a little notepad on your door. And, and that was their way of staying top of mind. Well, things have changed, right? And it's actually gotten easier for us. So now we can use the dare ads to stay top of mind on Facebook and social media. You can use smart plans to stay in front of people via, you know, phone, via text, via email. Uh, now with the postcard integration that Chime's done, that has just taken this to a whole different level. So now you can send postcards. Um, you have really great ways to stay in touch with people, but you have to make sure they all work together. And so do I use AI with dare ads? Absolutely. Um, because I want a multifaceted approach to getting in touch with people. And the more people see you, the more they trust you. So yeah, hundred percent use that. Perfect. All right. Now, a lot of people don't know that you've built your, most of your business through online, right? And, yeah. Which is amazing, dude. It's absolutely amazing. And most of that, would you say Facebook or Facebook lead ads, your database, or how does that fit in? It, so the way that I, when I got into it, when I got into real estate, you have to remember, like, I was not a lifetime real estate agent. I didn't sit around in high school and be like, I'm going to be a realtor. Never in a million years. Um, in fact, if you asked me back then, I would have laughed you out of the building. Like, nope, not following dad. Thanks. Um, I went a totally different, totally different direction. Um, and then I just saw the industry kind of, it was kind of boring and stale. And so I was like, ah, dang it. I really want to do this and I'll finally put my money where my mouth is. And so I got in and I researched, I researched real estate agents. I researched IDX websites. I researched everything about real estate. Like I just literally jumped in and researched before I ever even got my license. And one of the things that I saw was that at the time, real estate agents really weren't taking advantage of Facebook. And I bought several houses at that point. Like, I knew the process and I hated the process. And I was like, okay, how do I make this better for people? How do I not, how do I not suck at real estate? Mm -hmm. And so I actually started in the very beginning, like, okay, no, most agents aren't running on Facebook right now, or if they are, they're not really doing anything that's like really like meaty that I can grab onto. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do my own thing. So my business started, my entire real estate business started with $168 Facebook ad. From there, I grew, and as I, as I grew, I, I kept having more and more Facebook leads. I, I ramped my budget way up, and then it allowed me, I took 
I took the funds that I was getting from those, those deals that were closing and I started investing in more technology. And so I turned around and started buying ads on Zillow. I started buying ads on Google PPC and I started going and just building and building and building instead of going out. And, and when everybody else was like, Oh yeah, I'm going, you know, driving around in a new Jag. I was like, yeah, I'm just putting that money right back into my business. And I just kept growing off of those funds. When everybody else went out and bought a new house, I didn't, I stayed in my house and I kept reinvesting in my business. Mm, smart. So I how, use how many, Facebook. Let me ask real quick, Brett, how yeah. many lead sources in total did you think you had at the, at the height? 23. I, I know that number off the top of my head, 23 lead sources. Damn. So, I love it. I um, love that. But I broke it down into three pillars. So I had social media was a pillar and we'll talk on another video about that. I actually, that's something I picked up from a, a buddy of mine up in, in Canada, but I broke it down into three pillars eventually. And we'll talk about Wait, that on another call. Is that, yeah. um, Samard. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Jason Samard. Yeah. I, I got that directly from him. Um, because he saw that I was going like, I'm one of those guys that will go in like a hundred different directions and I can keep it all up here. But if I try to explain it to somebody else, they're like, dude, so Jason was like, you need three pillars, bro. And so I did three pillars and it helped refine my business a little bit, but yeah, 23 lead sources. I love that, man. So here, we, we don't have much time left. So I want you to tell me this, where, where do you think is the next opportunity that we may not be looking when it comes to online leads? Where, where is that? Where do you see it, man? Uh, this question got asked to me about to about a year and a half ago. And at the time, someone actually asked it a different way. They said, do you think Snapchat is the future? And I, I laughed him out of the building. I'm like, if anybody runs ads on Snapchat, like I'm gonna laugh my ass off. And then Aurora started running ads on, so she was, she was just using Snapchat all the time. And I'm like, are you using that for real estate? And she'd go through houses with Snapchat and like snap out houses to her database. And she was selling homes like that. So if you'd asked me then, I would have laughed you out of the building. Um, now, do I see it? Eh, it's probably not going to be the next big thing. Um, I don't like LinkedIn, so that's that's out. I think I don't I don't see the LinkedIn thing. I don't think that's going to be a viable resource. I do think Clubhouse might actually have some ad potential in there because you see how many people are getting in there. It'd be a different type of ad because at this point, it's essentially radio. Um, so you'd have a radio style ad. Um, I do think radio works pretty well. So it would be more, it'd be more of a branding play, not a lead generation play. It's more of a strengthening tool. But um, otherwise, the only big one that I can actually come up with, like off the top of my head is YouTube. If you're not doing YouTube ads yet, you should be. Um, because I don't know if any of you guys just saw this. YouTube is literally about to be the number one watched anything over cable, over dish, over any of that. YouTube is about to actually take that spot from all of them. So if you're not advertising on YouTube yet, you really should be. Randy, is that next for Chime? YouTube ads? Well, based off of your post the other day, I was thinking maybe Wikipedia ads. <laughs> Just kidding. That's Just kidding, way. everyone. Just kidding. If uh, the, problem, the problem with YouTube is you have to have video. Yeah. That's the problem which means that an agent is either going to have to learn to up their game with video or hire someone to do it. That's yeah, the that's, problem. That is, that, and that's a big problem, dude. So that's a very, very, very true statement. All right. We have a question from Dave Dennis. Great question. Does Chime have ready-made ads or do we need to provide them? I think the question would be in, in, what, in what sense, because the dare ads are already done for you. Um, as far as ready-made ads for you, um, I'm going to put a link in the group here in just a little bit with my Facebook ads, copy away. Um, those, those ones you can copy until you're blue in the face. Um, but otherwise I, I don't, I mean, Randy, are you guys creating, I mean, you guys have a, a Facebook management tool that you guys use. Like you guys manage people's Facebook, uh, ads accounts for them, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll put ads together for you. Um, I would say when it comes like the listing promotion piece, you know, it's based off of a listing, right? So the bulk of that work is done. Um, I would say really the best result is going to be 
starting, like you said, with the end in mind of who you want to be targeting. So like understand conceptually the buyer that you want and then communicate that with us. And we can take that thought process and turn it into an ad. Um, but it, it should be a more collaborative um, experience because, because one of the issues that we see on our side is agents have this ad in mind that they think they want to do. And, and, and this is, and they want to create these ads for these very specific reasons. And then they say, okay, I'm signing up with Facebook ads, but don't communicate with us what they want. So when our Facebook ads start running and it's not what they had in their mind, mm. it's suddenly, yep. it's like, oh, Chime's not listening. Like, well, yeah. And they can, don't, and they also don't, uh, they don't inspect what's happening on a weekly, monthly basis. It's like, they're just like, oh, there's a whole bunch of ads, let's go. And then they complain, right? Because they don't fully understand. This is a, a full contact sport on the back end as well, not just on the front end. Right. right. Yeah, we want to communicate. We want you to communicate with us and we want feedback. We want you to tell us, hey, you know, this is the copy that I wanted or this is kind of what I'm trying to generate. Um, so please don't confuse us for mind readers uh, because. Wait, I'm wait. Brett, though, it comes pretty close. Just <laughs> <laughs> heads up on that. <laughs> Here's, here's, the, here's the thing on it. When you, when you really break it down and you go, okay, well, you, if you want to create ads that are, that are going to work in your market, and I see so many people that just want to rip off and duplicate other people. If you really, really want ads that work in your market, take the time and figure out who you're trying to market to. I mean, literally, I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Figure out your target audience, then figure out how to communicate with them. And that's, once you do that, once you take that time to do it, I mean, you can literally go on, on like, go away for a weekend. Of course, when you do that, of course, you're really, really busy because anytime a real estate agent leaves for the weekend, they get absolutely buried. True. Uh, but anywho, go, go away for a weekend. Um, have someone answer your phone for you. Have, have something in place so that you can just go away for a weekend and really sit down and think about it. How can I get in front of these people? These are my target audience. Reach out to your title company. Find out who is actually like what areas are turning over and why they're turning over. Are they turning over because you have a move up buyer that's moving out of that area and into another area? Great. How do you get in front of those people? How do you talk to them about their home? Then you can start really refining what you're advertising. And once you do that, you actually turn into a marketing machine as opposed to a real estate agent that puts up ads. Big difference. No, I agree. I agree, man. And I put up the link to your ads. I put it up here in the chat. Oh, cool. I put oh, here, it, I can do that too. I also put it into the the uh, Facebook community as well. And I saw that you posted it up into the community as well. So I did. Right. I, yeah, I, I dropped it in the community. Cool. Oh, yours is much shorter than my link. See, I take care oh, of you, man. Damn, dude. <laughs> All right, well. Now, there you go. Click on Brett's link. Randy, thanks for being here, buddy. I know you had uh, R4 over there in Florida with Remax. You rock for jumping in. Looks like you got a haircut recently or you just combed your hair. I'm not sure. Uh, I just comb my hair. Yeah. It looks good. It, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't think he cuts his I don't think it's he cuts trend. his hair. Hey, trend, when, 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 I go, when I go in public, I do have to comb my hair. Y'all get <laughs> webinars from me at home where I don't comb my hair. We know. <laughs> hey man Brett, thanks for uh thanks for dropping some knowledge man appreciate that yep my problem my pleasure See you guys next week see ya